Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass. I'm your host, Sam, from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. And I'm Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. Yes, you are. Uh, each week we get together, we talk about cars, motorsport, F1, car, what else? Cars? Cars. We cars, talk about cars, cars. We? <laughs> <laughs> You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube.com forward slash Behind the Glass. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And Tony, if people want to support this podcast, what should they do? Watch it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but also head to Patreon. You can support us on patreon.com forward slash behind the glass. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the episode. I don't I don't feel like I need to apologize for last week, but I feel like we need to address it. Uh, you mean when we was in the Airbnb? No, the debate. <laughs> Oh, what? De- oh, okay. <laughs> You'd even forgotten about it, hadn't you? The debate. The debate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you missed last week's episode, Tony and I had an argument for 32 minutes yeah. about a BMW 2 Series Active Tourer. Yeah. And it, it got a bit heated on my part. <laughs> and whilst I don't regret anything I said, I maybe regret the way I handle myself. But can we d- just, truth be told, Tony was just properly winding me up. <laughs> I mean, at that point, we'd been on the road for about four or five days. We all knew how to push each other's buttons in a fun way. We, I mean, it was just, yeah, yeah. that's part of the road trip banter, isn't it? Yeah. And we sat down to do that podcast and I knew, I knew Tony thought the new BMW 2 Series Active Tour was an ugly car. I just knew. And it was his- How did you know that? I never told you. Yes, you, uh, don't start again. <laughs> what? Do not start again. It was your utter refusal to admit that you agreed to that point that led me to then, you know, disagree with everything else you're saying. Again, you were making very valid points. And of course, I have to apologize for uh, disrespecting your insight into the used car market. No, you don't have to apologize. No, but I think I was a little bit, you know, aggressive. (laughs) Yeah, but you you was aggressive because, so Sam's normally fairly hard to wind up it's a much easier to wind him up in person on a message it's impossible because he just goes away <laughs> just if you try it. and go in on him in a group he just ignores it and goes away because he knows what's coming but on this often time i can reel out a fish and i can and i can hook him and i can get him and last week was that perfect time and i could see him as i'm as i'm talking i can see him in his face getting more and more angry because he's trying to get something across without being too derogatory and about being trying to be nice and he's it's not working because I'm coming back with even more crap. Like the, the red mist just descended. <laughs> at which point I lost all yeah. anything. Just uh, you know, the whole situation went out the window. <laughs> and so yes, as I say, I don't regret anything I said. I'm not going back on my argument. But I, as I say, I do think that maybe I was a little disrespectful towards you and your uh, actual, you know, your insight, your knowledge of the used car market. I basically said you know nothing because <laughs> I. Was so determined to get you to admit that you also thought that car was unattractive. <laughs> and until you did that, I wouldn't accept anything you said. So look, it, it was what it was. You know, if you're coming on to listen to this podcast to expect the sort of very, you know, mediocre chat where we just agree about everything and we don't have any opinions. Does that happen very often? I mean, it doesn't happen. That, I mean, we agree about some things. Porsches mate. and Ferraris. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, our taste in cars is fairly similar, apart from the fact you like older cars and I like modern cars. But our taste in cars is fairly similar. But other than that, we do disagree quite a lot. We disagree a ton. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you're coming here for an, for a very sort of, you know, straightforward, down-the-line podcast, it's, it's not what you're going to get. We come from completely different backgrounds, as you like to point out last week when really? you made out that I get picked up from school in a Range Rover compared Volvo. to you in the back of a van. Um, but, you know, so this is just it. So, yeah, it is what it is. We're going to move on. Let's put that whole debate to bed. Any of you that were upset or offended or appalled by either of well, mainly me, um, I understand stand but uh, it is what it is so let's move on because we are now back you can probably tell the road trip unfortunately is over we're back in the uk um my youtube channel there's still a lot of road trip content to come on my youtube channel um but obviously yeah as i say i'm i'm now back you actually left a few days before paul and i did i did yeah and do you know what i'm actually glad we're back as in the the two podcasts we did away they were good they were good but you know, we'd been we'd been out all day. We'd been driving, and and I just feel maybe the energy levels weren't quite as they normally are. So um, for us, we know 
if we think we've done a good podcast or not, or if we haven't. And, and I just feel that them two were a, a tiny, tiny little bit off par, which is why I was pleased that I wound you up for 20 minutes. <laughs> because otherwise, I think it might have been a bit more boring. Well, that's upsetting. I quite enjoyed those podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know, Tony, that you were right behind the content as always. But no, hey, look, it was something that we discussed, I think, way back in when, when did we come out of the sort of major restrictions? End of June, was it? Yeah. And we were saying, like, you know, now that the world is opening up and we're going to be traveling again and working more and doing all these different things, it might become hard to maintain our consistency, something we've mm. done so well throughout lockdown. But we said, well, we just won't allow that to happen. And no. if, if we're away, we'll either record two or three episodes in advance or we'll just take the podcast on the road Correct. with us. So yeah. I'm glad we did that. And I think it was really fun doing the episode with Paul and we won't talk about the two series episode. But anyway, we are back. We are, so Tony's happy. And I'm assuming maybe lots of you are happy because I think it's, it's just nice to be back in the studio. I think so, yeah. We're here now. Yeah. Did you enjoy the trip in general though? Apart yeah, from, I did. Oh, clearly you didn't enjoy the podcast. But. No, I, I did enjoy them. But like, you know, we've had this conversation many times before. I, I just think we know when we've done a good one and whether we've done an okay one. I, I, I would like to think they're entertaining most weeks, which is why we do them. We enjoy it entertaining, essentially. But, but um, yeah, it, me in my heart, I just know when we've done a good one. Okay, you don't have to keep banging on about the fact <laughs> that you really didn't like the podcast we did on the trip. Well, anyway, things have happened since we've been away that we need to catch up on. Mm. And then I set you a task. I set you a challenge. Do you remember to do it? Yes, I did remember to okay. do it. <laughs> and we are going to talk about it. No, but you're it. a busy guy. No, mate. It was honestly harder than what mm. okay, so the, I thought. The challenge was, and this is our main topic for today, to pick to find five cars under 50 grand that we should tell our audience to go and buy right now. Oh, uh, no, go, go and buy? <laughs> what did you think? Oh my God. I thought you meant like best value. Yeah, yeah. No, that, well, that, and that's a reason to go and buy a car, isn't well, it? Not really, no. Okay, because what? there's two different lists, I think. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to have to think of another five. <laughs> we'll come back to it in a little bit. Um, but first off, uh, we've had some new patrons join whilst we're in a way, so thank you so much. Matt Fraser, George Osterberry. I'm going with George Osterberry. Um, thank you so much for, for signing up. We really appreciate it. Uh, and I also wanted to shout out some long-term patrons because we've had some people supporting us since the Patreon launch, July last year. Yeah. So Kev Arkless, Serge Trushin, uh, Jan Yap Quickies, Keys. I'm not going to pronounce that correctly. Uh, Luke Fuller, Macroy Fernandez. There's tons more, but it's a little shout out to say thank you because yeah. we love our patrons and, sure. and it's so great and it allows us to, well, keep doing the podcast and uh, it allows me to pull Tony away from work. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got time this week. I said, but the patrons need you. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's amazing to have you supporting us for such a long time and then also be getting new patrons. So we're very yeah. grateful for that. Anyway, did you catch... Any footage of our favourite car at the Goodwood members meet this weekend? No. What do you think our favourite car is? Well, it's not our favourite car because the way you said it, it'll be something derogatory that I hate and you love. <laughs> no, actually, we both dislike it. All oh, right. <laughs> it's the Gordon Murray T50. Ah. That very special uh, creation. So I saw a 15 second clip, uh, like a reel or something of it, um, driving around Goodwood. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's just address this in case you hadn't listened to previous episodes and you're like, oh my God, why are they hating on the greatest hypercar ever made? Uh, the Gordon Murray 250 is obviously from the creator of the McLaren F1, Gordon Murray. And it's his kind of, I would almost say like an homage to the F1 or like a modern day F1. It's still three-seater central driving position, naturally aspirated V12 that revs up to 12,000 RPM, something like that. Manual, super light. It's got what engine. Is it? Is, it, is it a Mercedes V12 or? The <laughs> Once again, the podcast that does no research. <laughs> I actually don't, is it not a Cosworth? No, that's the Valkyrie, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, Gord, that's so... Why do you have to ask questions? <laughs> Sorry, well, I mean, you, you want me to interact. <laughs> I'm interacting. I know, but... Uh, Cosworth, it is Cosworth. Right, okay, okay. Fine. Oh, 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 I knew something about cars. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it, look, it, when it came out, it was heralded by the internet as, oh my God, a proper true driver's car. And we were very quick to kind of go, oh, you know... Uh, no chance. And a lot of it was to do with the fact it's price and that at that price point, there are a million cars like this. We didn't like the way it looks. We thought it was a little bit too F1-esque, as in McLaren F1-esque. And anyway, we had our issues with it. Yeah. Um, but this was its dynamic debut at the Goodwood members meet. And it did sound good. 
I, I I would say I thought it sounded good. A big shouty V12. What V12 doesn't though? In it, yeah, at twelve thousand RPM. I mean, it's going to yeah, sound yeah. mega, right? Yeah. I think it looked pretty awful. I mean, you didn't really see much footage, but it. Lo- <laughs> so I saw someone tweet saying it looks like a spoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a dare I say it's a low rent kit car, isn't it? Basically, with not really any. I don't think it's any, low but, rent. I no, think no, it's, it's a lot of money high, yeah. to buy. But what I mean is, is that the production costs compared to making a free series, for instance, will be pennies, if you get what I mean. Uh, yes, I, I, I assume the engineering is amazing because it's Gordon Murray. The design, the engineering, the fact there's a fan on it is for a reason. And, mm. and the car, I think a lot of work has gone into it. And, you know, it's just, we just don't like it. We just, we're just not big fans yeah, of it. Yeah, but why, 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 is the, why is the engineering unbelievable? Because it's Gordon Murray, because he designed the, the McLaren F1 car. No, because I think to create a car that achieves what he is hoping to achieve with it, a bit like with the Valkyrie, that can have an engine like that, can be that lightweight, can have that central diving position, can have a manual in a high power, high torque, um, you know, V12, to be aerodynamically... Uh, fantastic without having loads of appendages on them and stuff like that, huge wings and stuff. The car is quite clean looking. I say I think it's ugly, but quite clean looking. So I'm sure if we sat down and sat with Gordon, he talked us through it. We go, oh wow, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe I don't know enough, but but in terms of engineering, to bolt a manual gearbox onto a V12 engine, I would say engineering wise is probably a lot easier than them bolting an automatic because of talk reason uh, you know a manual gearbox is more robust than an automatic gearbox because it's got less mechanical things inside an automatic gearbox in double clutch and with a torque converter has got loads more ecus and double clutches and whatnot so loads more to go wrong i think for slim simplicity a man a manual gearbox is far less of an engineering achievement than a ma- automatic. Fair enough, fair enough. I think, yeah, as I say, we'll we'll hold judgment. I'm sure it will be a mega thing to drive. I just think- Really? I'm sure it will be. Yeah, come on, why wouldn't it be a mega thing to drive? <sighs> what, uh, uh, how many horsepower is it? Um, 663 PS, so 660 I horsepower. Honestly, mate, probably, in my head, I probably couldn't think of anything worse. A really? Si- a 600 hod horsepower light V12 car of a manual gearbox. Yeah, I think that sounds quite good. I just don't like the price and the looks. Yeah, I mean, and and then I haven't even started on that. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? Just as a, do, I mean, I could be, I haven't driven it. I could be completely wrong. It could absolutely blow my mind. It's, but It's it, not very up your street. No, it's not up my street at all. And the reason I wanted to bring it up because it does sound good, right? Well, I, I think it sounds good. But they also released more clips of the Valkyrie once again testing. Mm. I think the Valkyrie still excites me more. I know this is, goes completely against everything I just said. Is it here yet? No. Oh. <laughs> Will it ever be here? What about the spider? Is that coming? <laughs> oh, almost certainly. <laughs> but of those two, if I was in that world of ludicrous money, I don't know why I think the Valkyrie is a tiny bit more acceptable than the Gordon Murray car, mm. which I, I say kind of goes against everything, goes against all my argument points. So once again, we're sort of, you know, being a bit contradictory here, but... Yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to get out that I still don't like, really like the T50. Uh, yeah, no, no. I mean, I, yeah, I'm not going to argue with you on no, that one. Okay, unfortunately. Fine. Well, let's move on. Um, because the Daily Mail, go on, Daily Mail. Really? Posted a very interesting article this week. Must be true then. Oh, <laughs> off the back of our uh, episode talking about used car prices. Huh? And the title was The 20 Used Cars That Have Shot Up in Value in the Last Six Months Thanks to the, thanks to the Shortage of New Models. So there's only 20, is there? There's, well, the 20 that they've picked. Right, okay. So, I mean, they could have picked any model because they've all gone up. They've all I gone mean, up. that's typical media that are absolutely clueless. Well, let's see what they're. So I'm, I'm going to quiz you now. I want to see if you agree with their statements. Well, I'm going to agree with their statements because they've all gone up. But they've given actual numbers. All right. So, Vauxhall Astra yeah. is first on the list. Average market value in March, seven grand. Okay. In September, 10 grand. Mm, 30%. Is that right? They're saying 47% increase. For a Vauxhall Astra. It's not my end of the market, but I'm not surprised. I mean, I won't be surprised. Statistically, they're going to know that they've just looked at the stats you know and but it not, is the daily mail but it is the daily mail <laughs> yeah. and and i bet they've 
the way they've done it is looked at the the cheapest price yes. car in March yes. to the dearest <laughs> price car now. Yeah. I, I, I don't think they've gone up by 47%. I wouldn't have thought so. Fair enough. They're, they're, but this is why I want to ask you, because if you don't know, if you're not... Well, I think the Daily Mail is such an international publication, isn't it? But they, they separate it for different countries. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have to take everything that's written on the Daily Mail with a pinch of salt. Well, uh, I think tabloids and, and normal news in general, mate, I just think you have to take it all with a pinch of salt. I agree, more and more than ever yeah. the, the, these days. But, um, okay, moving on. Skoda Yeti. Mm. March, 10 grand. September, 15 Another forty-seven percent increase. They're saying mm. for a Skoda Yeti. Yeah, I mean, uh, 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 again, I and and then, and then what are they looking at? Models? They're looking at a base model and then comparing it to a high model. You know, like it's saying here, Cap HPI. So yeah. you know, Cap says a three-year-old model with an average mileage has gone up by more. Oh yeah, average mileage. So it's, Cap, for those of you who don't know, Cap is a um, widely recognised as the valuation service for the motor trade. There's there's two big ones. It's called Glasses and Cap, but Cap is the one that most people use. Glasses is a bit out of date. But the way they 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 get the figures for their models is, well, this is how they did. I don't know if they do now, but they did, is that they would pick, say, a Ford Fiesta. They would pick one model from that Ford Fiesta and, and follow its value and then overall make all the Ford Fiestas the same as, as a percentage. So CAP is what we call a guide. And it is okay. a, it's a guide. It's not, it's not, they don't buy cars. They don't sell cars. It's all done through um, BCA car auctions as well. That's how they follow their trends, essentially. So um, <clears throat> it's a guide. And so you would use that if a car's coming in for part exchange or how would you use that? So I I don't use it a lot because the Cap, stuff caps up here for yeah, you, isn't it? Up the stuff brain. the stuff that I buy is what I buy all the time in general. So um I kind of work for what I can sell it for and work back. So my my biggest valuation barometer is Auto Trader. Oh, okay. So, I, I do occasionally if it's a if it's a bit of an odd specialist stuff, I will look at Cap, but it's not really relevant. And Porsche are a very good example. So, when Cap value Porsches, um, they value them on a standard car. We know that most Porsches have between five and twenty grand worth of options, which are not included in Cap values. So, you know, you you never really ever give Cap for a Porsche because they're always over cap what we call over cap so and especially now in these times I mean throw it in the bin and it's weird that isn't it because you know when you get a sort of what an Audi RS4 or a BMW I don't know what does it 330D yeah you know the kit that comes with the cars is fairly standard yeah um, but you know, a few options, technology plus, you know, mm. can add, you know, 500 or grand. Would I, would I be right into used values? A, well, again, uh, on extras, if you, if you have a car with 10 or 15 grand of options, it doesn't make it 10 or 15 grand more as a used car. It, it does make it worth a little bit more, but, but there's so many different variations of options now and all these packs that you can get on these cars. And if you've noticed over the last few years, Mercedes, BMW, Audi especially, they sell cars in packs now. So you have a, an M Sport Plus pack for a BMW, you have, a, you have an S-Line, um, or you have... Um, the AMGs are very good ones. So you have a, a, you know, an AMG Line, an AMG Premium, an AMG Premium Plus... So they sell them in packs. So they're all fairly similar in terms of the cars. Um, so they're a little bit easier to price, whereas in the old days you would have, say, an Audi, for instance. You'd have one with a tech pack, one without a tech pack, one with a pan roof, one without, and it would be a little bit harder to value. Um, but it does make a little bit of difference spec, but it's not not what you think but is it so my my initial question was is it different based on basically that where you were at the market so for an audi bmw or mercedes the spec options won't 
impact the price as much is like Ferrari, if it's got carbon seats in a carbon driver's zone, that will be more desirable and more valuable inherently than a comfort seats, non-carbon car. Yeah. And same with Porsche, Club Sport, et cetera. So, Correct. you know, up at the high end, those options make a bigger difference to future value. Yeah. And the cap, the, the cap values on supercars are literally throw it in the bin. <laughs> Like it's not, it's not relevant, mate. You know okay. what I mean? It's like it's not. Don't do it. Yeah, look, look, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't imagine any specialist supercar dealer would ever look at cap on valuations. That they'd literally just use their knowledge from um, what they've sold the previous one for, or what they're going, what they're advertised for online. And again, that's a really odd market to price as well. That high end, real high end market because it's very clouded because a lot of the cars are on SOR. So what what they're advertised for can be loads more than actually what they're selling for because people, you'll have a customer going, well, I want this for it. And yeah. the, dealer, the dealer just puts it out. They haven't even got the car in stock. Yeah, I could put my 360 up for 150 grand. You do what you like of it, D- yeah. Doesn't mean that 360s are worth 100. Well, I might, Tony. You know. Yeah, you might, yeah but th- <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're right. It's skewed. But then take, for example, Magnitude or finance companies out there their uh, RV, their future value, what's it called? Uh, they work on cap. They work on cap. Mm. So your residual value, that sort of final instalment. It's a percentage. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So, so they use cap. Yeah, so they use cap as a guide. Now, again, the specialists, Ferrari, Lamborghini, GT product, Porsches, McLaren, they won't use cap. They'll go a percentage of the retail value because cap's derogatory to it. It's not, okay. it's not relevant. But it's on a new car it's a percentage of cap and that right. gets adjusted monthly according to the market. Okay. Thank you for that insight. Uh, let's power on with this list and see where we ended up. Jaguar XF, 14 grand to 21 grand. Oh my God. So if you're spending 21 grand on a Jaguar XF today, you're overpaying, right? I mean, that's a... Well, you're not, you're not, you're not overpaying if you need it. You, and, and as well, if you're part exchanging, you're not overpaying either because your car's gone up by a similar percentage. So as I said to a few weeks ago, I don't think anything's gone up 47% from what I've seen. And I Just do you wait, by the way, this is 18th. We've, we've got to get to number one. So it's going up and increasing. Oh, order. no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I, 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 mate, I, so this is basically, if you've got any of these cars, call up Tony, because they're going to be inherently more valuable than you realise. Um, and I'm sure, are you still keen for stock? No, no, no. I don't think there will be inherently more value. I think... No, I think, surely, if you had an XF, and you've had it for a few years, and you thought it was worth 14 grand, it's now worth 21. Yeah, well, retail, yeah. Okay, well, I was trying to help you out there. But yeah. If you don't want the I mean, stock. I do need some stock. Not Just trying to do your money. favour there. Thank you. <laughs> bit of free advertising with the podcast. Yeah. You don't want it. And I mean, actually, while we're talking about values, very quickly is a bit of an short in uh, consumer advice. Over the last three or four weeks, prices have really started to soften off. Ah, so and you that, think the buzz has slowed down a bit? Well, that, the, the, this is nothing to do with, this is just because the market slowed down. So there's still a shortage of cars, for sure, um, but but the, the the bubble of cars being ridiculous money, it's definitely stopped. Mm. Is that a seasonal thing though? Yeah. So in general, I'm I'm talking from a, a majority, not a minority, because I'm sure there are dealers out there that do very well this time of year. But in general, me as a business and what I do, um, October, November, December is the, the the quietest period of the year for me. Fine, interesting. So it could be a a, a culmination of softening market and time of year. But there is still a shortage of cars. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I was uh, the shortage of cars because some cars that I want to buy that start oh. turning up. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mini Cooper, 10 grand to 16 grand, apparently. Mm. I'm going to rattle through these a bit yeah, now. Through, and if you're yeah, shocked yeah. by any, then feel I'm free. I'm shocked by all of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ford Cougar, 12 to 18, apparently. Mm. Uh, Mini Cooper S, 12 to 18. Uh, we're still not even in the top 10 yet. Kia Soul EV. An EV going up, apparently. 10, 10 grand to 16 grand. That's nearly 50% increase. Nis- Nissan X-Trail, 11 to 17. Nissan Qashqai, 11 to 17. Uh, Renault Kajar, 9 to 14. What's going to be at the top of this list? A Peugeot Partner TP. Cool car. Um, 8 to 12. That's over 50% average increase, apparently. Volvo V40, 10 to 15. Prius, 
Prius is apparently going mental. 53% average increase for Prius. It's all the drivers. <laughs> Maybe it is. Hyundai Ionic, uh, Ford Galaxy, Addison Lee going crazy right there. They reckon 54% average increase in price between March and September. Well, you know, Addison Galaxy. Lee have just, um, just uh, done a marketing thing where they're going to hire another thousand drivers. Wow. And they'll all go in them. That, that, well, that's exactly it. Ford yeah. Galaxies, that's demand is uh, pushing up that increase. Vauxhall Mocha, a 54% average increase for a Vauxhall Mocha. Vauxhall Combo Life. 55% increase. V-Class. I so I'm starting to see here that there's a lot of like, basically mini cabs. Yeah. They're saying that a V-Class in March, 25 grand. Average value into September, 40 grand. Okay. Uh, for a V-Class. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah. You're, I, now, you're now losing. I'm, I'm not having it, yeah. <laughs> what about Vauxhall Sephira, one of the uh, popular cars for last week? Yeah. I now know what that is. I'm joking. I always knew what it was, but that was me again trying to wind up Tony in... Anyway, I'm not, not getting involved with it. We're moving on. Uh, eight grand to 13 grand, they're saying, for Zephyrus. And then top of the list, with an average increase of 60%, Toyota Auris Hybrid. Okay. So not one of them cars are on the list of cars that I sell, apart from a Mini... And I can tell you categorically, they've not gone up by 50%. Model for model, they've not gone up by 50%. Okay. So be careful when you read the Daily Mail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I mean, it's not correct. I mean, no. it's not going to be. They don't, <laughs> they don't do the job. I didn't think it would be. That's no. why I wanted to put them under your scrutiny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm often here knocking Autocar's lovely list. Today, uh, yeah. we've destroyed the Daily Mail. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, should we get into our main topic for today? Because I'm now super intrigued. After you flapped at the start of the episode, I'm now intrigued by what route you've gone. Because I set you the challenge. I said, look, for... For this week's episode, let's find five cars under 50k that you, i.e. the audience, should buy now. Okay, so I kind of misinterpreted that a little bit. In fact, I'm going to read the text that you actually <laughs> oh, no. sent me because <laughs> You're it so never out said... Me. If, don't read the one that starts Renault... No, BMW 2 Series Active Tour. <laughs> Just skip past that one. <laughs> right. Topic for Monday. Oh. <laughs> Five cars under 50k you should buy right now. Now, Sam never normally messages me about topics or anything, unless it's something like this where he does actually need me to think. Need you to do some prior research. Oh, I've read that completely wrong. So what did you think I suggested? In terms of value. So as in like, as in these cars could go up no or? no no no. in terms of what i think are a good value in the market because at the moment at the moment there isn't really too much that's good value at the moment because we know that used cars and this is all used cars by the yeah, way yeah, this isn't yeah, yeah, same, this is, same with my list this is used cars they're not necessarily the best in their field, but I think they're the best value, essentially. But I think you've hit the nail on the head. I actually Fine. think, I think you've, this is exactly what I wanted from right. you. Okay. It also is making me think that our lists are going to be so different. Because <laughs> imagine giving me 50k <laughs> and letting me loose on Auto Trader. You buy a 360. <laughs> There's only one available sub 50k. Really? Only one. Your Mar one. Markets in no. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> So yeah, I think our list is going to be very different. Uh, yeah. Do you now? Are they all gravel with stock on them? No, no okay. they're, they're not. I, 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 I tried to. I do need some stock, by yeah. the way. So if okay. it's un under four year old and under forty thousand miles, then then I'd like to buy it. But but no, they're not. Um, look, okay. I've tried to think a little bit more out the box. It's not stock. It's stock that I've definitely had in the past, and stock that I'd always buy. But. I don't know how many of actually I've got in the stock. At okay, the and and do you have links to specific cars or they're generalizations? No, it's generalizations. Okay, so I'll do generalizations as well. Go on, hit me with your first because right, I'm now so intrigued. The, the first one is uh, Alpha Julia Quadrifolia. Oh, yeah, which we just keep banging on about. Yeah. Now, because of the horrible time continuum, whatever that we live in on YouTube, I don't know if this video is going to have gone like I drove. <laughs> I drove the GTA. Oh, no, you <gasps> said. Oh, I think we have to talk about it next week. Yeah, well, no, sure. we can. Yeah, let's talk about it next week. Let's do it. But we keep talking about the Quadrifolio. Yeah. Yet, well, you did have, you earned about three at one point, at least the dealership had about yeah. three come through. Yeah. And it's getting to that annoying point. I think some of the audience are being a bit like, put your money where your mouth is. Because I feel like well, I every have. week, I know you have. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely haven't. We had one of the first ones. Remember? Yeah, we I remember we, that it. was one of the first videos yeah, we made yeah. on my channel yeah, with, yeah. with you. Is uh, yeah, you getting the Julia Quadrifolio. So 
Why? I think we're going to repeat ourselves, but... So why have you picked it? Let's do well, that. Why I, have you I just picked think, it? So in terms of how I've interpreted value, right, is either it's lost, a sh- even in these times, it's lost a shed load of money from new, even in these times, or it's just good value for money list. As a list car, brand new, it's just good value. Now, take the entertainment system away or the infotainment system away from that, Julia. I think it's unrivaled to drive, mate, in that class. It is exceptional. Price-wise, what are we talking about? Well, you get on 50k. No, okay, you get so a, a nice one. You know, oh. like a, I would say a two-year-old car, tops. Okay. The equivalent C63 and M3? Um, similar. Similar kind of money? I, I, I would say the Alpha's probably held up, which is odd saying it from an Alfa Romeo. They're just a bit more exclusive um, but yeah, I, w- I would say they're all similar, but to drive, I think it's better than all I, of them. I'm so with you. I was never yeah. a fan of that previous generation M3, M4, yeah. and the C63 is fun, but borderline hooligan. Yeah. And there's something, I talked about this with Paul actually during the road trip, something's happening with Mercedes at the minute where they're just crossing over into a slightly odd uh, brand representation or image. Do you know what I mean? Like there was obviously that famous thing of, you know, BMW people on the motorway sitting right, you know, two meters from your tailgate. Yeah. Something about Mercedes, I think at the minute, they've just got a slight air of hooliganism. Well, what happens is as well, as we've said this before, is that all these, the, the big three, the big German three, Audi, Mercedes and BMW, they all have runs where they'll have a four or five year run of, dominating and that's that's them flexing their muscles trying to gain the market share essentially and from 2018 2019 it's been mercedes i think it was audi before then and it was bmw before then bmw are coming back audi have completely lost their way Mm -hmm. and are miles behind in terms of just just perception or something right what they're offering yeah Yeah. i think the cars are if you're an Audi fan, you're an Audi fan. Yeah. But there was that period of time with last generation RS3 and R- where Audi were just the bet, like the coolest. You couldn't do anything e- wrong. You couldn't do anything no, wrong. No. Every car came out, was beautiful. The styling was amazing. The interior was wonderful. It was super desirable, super premium. Yeah. But you're right, that switched a little bit. And even yeah. though BMW may be less of a driver's car, it somehow opened its, its market up a lot wider. And even people like me are coming back to the brand and uh, with the X3. So yeah, you're right. It's cyclical, right? They yeah. all go through these changes. But yeah. Maybe it's just Paul and I, but there was just something where Mercedes at the moment has got a slight feel to them. Maybe it's because they're great value on the used market and, you know, people is, there's well, too were. many of them out there. They or- were. I mean, they're not at the moment. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, you know, what nearly entered my list was a A45S and an A35S mm. Mm. Um, as, as, a, as hot hatches. But actually, they're really quite expensive at the moment because of what's going on. So I really tried to think a little bit more yeah. out the box. And, and whilst there isn't an RS4 saloon, you're right, the Julia Quad is <clears throat> definitely my pick of the bunch. And yeah, those yeah, three yeah. of that, of two years old, C63 M3 Julia Quad, always Julia. Uh, yeah, so if you if you like driving, essentially, the, the, the best two is obviously the M car and, and the, the Alpha, if you like driving. And I just think that Alpha, I'm talking... Older shape. I'm not talking yeah, current yeah, yeah, M3 because yeah. you can't compare them. Of course, yeah, different different, yeah. different prices. But um, in terms of entertainment and place to sit, you'd have an Audi or or the Mercedes essentially. So that's how I'd split the four. Fair enough. So I've gone very much in the other direction with this list as I kind of hinted at. So my first choice, not I mean maybe it's value, <laughs> Panamera GTS. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is a 2016 car, which I think was the facelift. It's not the proper Gen 1, mm. but it's still the what I call the bubbly Panamera. Yeah, yeah. It's not the sharper lines. It's got the 4.8 litre V8. I found a car here at a Porsche dealer. Mm. Porsche Sensor Porsche Center Portsmouth. Just mm. give me a little shout out. Um, 50k on the dot. Not even big mileage. It's 35,000 miles I think it had, um, which for a Panamera I think is half decent. Now... I haven't, I haven't spoken to Magnitude about this, but it's coming out at under 900 quid a month on PCP. Yeah, and, and actually, they, them, them, I mean, obviously we know how much of a Porsche fans we are, but they, something like that didn't go into my 
list because I was obviously thinking of overall costs and and it's, yeah, and, it's expensive to and, run. <laughs> and also, if you buy Porsche approved, you're fine because they come with a two year warranty. But if you're buying that on the second hand market, that's a be careful. Yeah, yeah, but it, that's a <laughs> pre purchase inspection bill needed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I learned, you know, Porsche, this whole bulletproof build quality thing, it is a new thing. I was like, oh, surely a nine nine six will be just like a brand new nine nine two. Well, we had this conversation yeah. before, and I said from like oh nine, they got there, and you went, well, this no, is the, this is the twenty sixteen car, yeah, yeah. so you know it should be good. I think it's a, I don't think it's a stunner, but I think it's a stunning car to get for fifty k. Yeah, as a sort of a beast to just demolish roads it is a little four-door super sports car not mm. supercar but you know gt car i think yeah sounds great yeah. you can get passengers in it comfortably yeah. well equipped porsche life i'm just i'm a big fan of that. and it is good value because that car would have been well into a hundred grand new that car so exactly it, that. it is good value okay next up sir so the car that I always drive and when I get out of it, think, why would you want anything else? Oh, God. It has its problems. Range Rover Sport. <sighs> oh, Ex- exclusive. You've had, so, you're having children, you're getting one? No. Oh. Not, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Clock is ticking, apparently. Um, sorry if I just blurted everyone's headphones on there, but yeah, exclusive. I've been invited to the launch of the new Range Rover. Yeah. <gasps> It's uh, weeks away. Range Rover first, then there'll be a sport after, right? For sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah There's yeah, the yeah. big okay. new first new Range Rover in 10 years. Yeah. 2012 was the last one. Yeah. That's exciting, isn't it? But yeah, let's go back to the sport. You're right. I mean, it's become the golf of the SUV market, as we've yeah. said before. Yeah. But therefore, it still ticks the box. If you rock up in a Range Rover, isn't it? it's got some kind of class, understated class. Yeah. It just does everything so nicely, apart from sometimes they break. <laughs> um, which is the one to have? Me, I would have the three liter diesel HSE Dynamic. That that's the one to have. Again, uh, like a f- three year old, four year old one would be sub fifty k. Um, they're eighty five grand new. Even in these stupid times, they would have been forty grand last year or early forties last year. Um, but even in these times, to drive, and I had to put an SUV in there as well because it's 50% of the, the market, essentially. Sense, yeah, yeah. So um, to drive, it, you know, every day as is, is just a car that does everything, really, I, I can never really think of anything better, really, to be honest. They are just still very desirable, I think. And I still find them personally more desirable than the big Range Rovers, but let's see what the new one's going to be like. But um, They yeah. always have been, though. They always have been. Their yeah. size is a bit more appropriate, yeah. a bit more usable, got sort of sleeker lines. Cheaper. Cheaper, <laughs> well, yeah. always more attractive. But no, you're right, and you're right to include an SUV. So to flip that, uh, I've also included an SUV, X3 M40i. <laughs> Well, that nearly went in my list. Yeah, because there'll be one available via gravel cut <laughs> very soon. Not with a sunroof, but still very... No, I'm, I'm joking. A oh, roof sorry. box? Maybe I won't, because Andrew's finally coming on the podcast to do the SUV special. Oh, good. And he's literally said he's going to bring listings of all the cars they've got in stock at the moment that I should replace good. the X3 with. Damn it! Um, but uh, they've got five Defenders in stock at Alexander's Prestige at the moment. Yeah, they're big money. Five Defenders the in the Alexander. Yeah. It's going to get expensive for me. But yeah, X3 M40i... So you, the new ones you can't get yet. I've seen like one on Instagram, mm. if that's, so they did do a facelift, but you just can't get them. And also, I don't know if I like the light so much the new one, but what a load of car. And I keep saying it. And whilst I joke continuously about selling that car, and it's purely from a fact that I don't find it exciting to walk up to. I never turn around and go, what a look, what a looker. Mm. And I don't go like, oh, it's like, you know, I say, Defender, um, uh, there's plenty of other SUVs out there that I can think of. Range Rover Sport. Yeah. You know, lots of things. I'm, uh, F-Pace SVR. I'm like, <gasps> with that car, it's just so good. It yeah. does everything. My mate, one of my best mates, you met him at the wedding. Yeah, yeah. Ume. Yeah, yeah. Uh, X7. He's, he went out and bought yeah. the X7. Yeah, yeah. He's been a Range Rover guy his whole life. Bought an X7, the big top, you know, all the yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Range Rover, com- not Range Rover Sport, that's Range Rover competitor. Yeah, big, proper, like lots yeah. of money, all yeah. the kit. Yeah. And we were just bonding over... BMW's usability, how yeah. their tech is so easy to use. The, yeah. the car, they take a beating. They, it seems to me affordable to run. Is that true? Like uh, more, more, more so than a Range Rover, for sure, because yeah. um, they're, they're biannual servicing. Um, they just don't go wrong, mate. In general, BMWs are very good. So 
you, you know, even when they get past the, the manufacturer, obviously they do have their problems. So people shout to me saying, well, I've had loads of problems. I know someone who's had put an engine in their M4. That is common, by the way. <laughs> okay. That happens. But in general, yeah. it, you know, they are bulletproof BMW. And uh, the thing that everyone likes to knock in terms of like a driver's car, I mean, it's an SUV, so take a pill, uh, is the run flat tyres. But mm. I can... To ha- is it, as a daily car in London, yeah. I'm obsessed with those one flat tyres. Yeah. And actually, when you compare it to the to the rivals, it is good value for money. Yeah. And, it, and like I said, it is very hard for us at the moment to pick this list because of the inflated used car prices. But that was nearly on my list. Okay, car. good. I'm glad because you'll be selling one soon. <laughs> um, so next up, we're on to your third car now. BMW 2 Series. Oh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I was gonna say if you, I was gonna say if you say active tour, I'll punch you square in the face. <laughs> no, it's not in there. No, not at all. No. Not even the coupe. Okay, fine. <laughs> so uh, Hyundai i thirty N. Oh, out mm. of nowhere. Yeah. Okay, so what's your argument here? So again, I've gone for value, as in the value of what the car does, and and I considered the the Yaris GR. Okay. But that car isn't good value because it's over list. So I, I, re- I really, and as well, the Golf R and the A35S and that, all the hot hatches. But mm-hmm. I tried to think of what the car does for value. Agreed. Yeah. And, and that punches above its weight. It punches above its weight. And we often put it in the uh, the class of Megane Trophy or Civic Type R. Obviously, it's not quite up there, but it's in that realm where yeah. drivers can't. They're, are they manual only, the i30? Ma- uh, I think they've, they've, they're just- You can do an auto. Just now. Okay, You've Just the DCT coming now. But so, more driver focused. So less driver focused than the Honda Civic Type R and the Megane. It sits just below them, but it sits above a Golf R- it sits above an S3. It sits above an A35. So, in terms of dynamic feel and capability, correct. Okay, concerned of how it makes you feel. Yeah. And again, I did consider the Yaris GR, but I, I didn't purely because of the values of them. And it's a it's a little car. Um, a, a, another one I was going to put in was uh, the Fiesta ST, but I didn't because again. They're quite a lot of money, mm. mate. They're twenty. F- a newer shape one is early twenties, and that i thirty n knocks spots off a of Fiesta ST in terms of capabilities and what it can do. I was just about to ask you a question, which came into my mind. Firstly, have you seen the spy shots of the new Civic Type R? No, it looks mega. Really, it looks more like a sort of saloon. Anyway, that's very exciting. That'll be for a future episode. I was about to ask you about the i30N. Oh, that's so annoying. Okay, well, you know, you're right to include include a hatch like that. And I, th- I think it's desirable, it's quirky, it's different, it's unique. Yes, that's a super competitive place in the market. They used yeah. hot hatches. Yeah. Um, but i30N, I think, has always been just a bit cool and a bit and a bit yeah. different. And we always sell them as well. We've got, we oh, sold really? one last week and we've got a, a later car coming in. Uh, I think it's due in today, actually. Okay. So... Um, yeah, they always sell. They're always good news. And they are, take the badge away. Well, I mean, we all know it's designed by the bloke who used to design the M cars. So it is a real proper focus hot hatch. It's really very good. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I agree with you, but that, that's what I was going to say. Uh, do you know, maybe comment below. I feel like a lot of people are selling their GI Yaris's. Well, they'd be right to because they're still strong money. You can't get them. And oddly, mate, as well, which I've I've noticed, a lot of people that own supercars have got GR Yaris's, like as their little trolley car, essentially, their little blast car. N- basically, everyone at Supercar Drivers got one. Really? The members. All the members. They've all got Yaris's. I, can't, I, can't, I couldn't get my head around it. And are they all keeping hold of them? I don't know because I don't talk mm. to them. But it's just you know whenever I, <laughs> <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I don't talk to them, I go to those meets and I oh, I don't want to talk to anyone. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, yeah. But because I I know like four maybe f- I think five people who were on the early Yaris trend got a Yaris. I love. Mm. It. I was so good. Yeah. And then they've gone a bit off the boil of actually three, four, six months down the line. I don't know, is anyone in them six months? Anyway, a chunk of time down the line. I'm not so sure it's as engaging as once I first thought. It, it, you should have plateau a bit. You plateau with the car because there's so much grip. It's so capable. It's so chuckable that after you've done that 
for two months, you're a bit like, well, what do I do now? Yeah, and they go through trends as well, cars, as we know. And to be honest, initially, the Yar- and the Yaris had huge hype and everyone that drove it, apart from the seating position, has loved it. Some people moaned about the gearbox and the and the, the throw on the gearbox as well. But in general, that car was very well received. Um, it had a little bit of a dip in values and then kind of come back again. Um, you can't get them. I think because of the chips, or well, just... they've either discontinued them uh, in terms of definitely to twenty twenty three. As far as I know, if you order one today, Toyota dealers that follow us will will yeah, be able to back this, this up. Yeah, but I think it's an allocation thing, isn't it? Because aren't they building a certain amount per year? Correct. And so that's probably what it is. Correct. The, the amount that they're building per year. So I, yeah, I don't think they're discontinued as such, but they're just now waiting for yeah. the next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Build allocation. Yeah. Okay, so next on my list. Mercedes oh S63 coupe oh are they 50 grand so you can find a few higher mileage cars here's one at 45 grand being sold privately that's a now, bruiser, that is yeah so the, my flip of this was a car that we I've only bought a few at one point it's the S500 yes so not the 63 but still I mean pretty much all the same car yeah um, you're getting the V8 you're getting all the looks the usability um, without the price tag and they're actually maybe more if we're going down your thought process more value but because i put my list together i'm like oh my god you can get an s63 <laughs> buy it um i just think so we all know my love for the bentley continental mm-hmm. a 2014 continental firstly is still quite a bit of money yeah yeah but also not i don't think quite as attractive a proposition as the s63 well in terms of tech mate it won't get anywhere near that car in terms of the technology in it's that got car. the double screen yeah, so this yeah. is a t- you know, 2014 car it was one of the first to have that mm. sort of double screen layout so comfortable and we know that Mercedes because they're so heavy loaded at this top end of the range S class S so fully loaded with kit they mm. do age well yes because you can get in a car thinking oh, it's a 2014 car but oh my god it's got massage seats and air cooled necks and yeah. all these kind of bits of kit that you most cars wouldn't have had yeah. from that era um so one thing, I mean, high running costs, yes, but you're buying a, a 5.5 litre V8 AMG, like... That would have been 120 oh, grand new, that car. Easy. And you can fit four people in. Yeah. Um, yeah. This one's got the panoramic, or not panoramic, a glass sunroof. Yep. I mean, it, it's a it's a cruiser, mm. classy cruiser, more understated than the Bentley, more yep. understated than, I don't know what else would be in that sector. But I mean, look at the Burmeister sound system. I might buy this car. This looks <laughs> amazing. What a thing. I couldn't think of anything worse. Really? No, Why? No, in terms of just because I know what's coming in terms miles. of yeah, oh. running costs. Yeah, it's yeah. quite high mileage. Yeah. But it's a it's a bargain. So I think I think the S five hundred is the more sensible route to go and actually the car that, you know, probably should be on my list, but if you put an S sixty three in front of me, I'll be like, Yep, yep, take that. Yeah. Um okay, next up for you, number four, please. You're gonna have to check your list, aren't you? Uh uh M two comp. Uh. So predictable for behind the glass. If only GT fours were under fifty k. Yeah, um, no, yeah. I, I, mean, I can't think really of a of a better little sports car for that money. Obviously, there are better. You've got a Cayman, which, which is obviously the best in class, but a good one is well over fifty grand essentially. But um, you know, a, a, yeah. a newer car. Well, I'm trying to seven eighteen Cayman. I don't think it's as desirable as an M two comp. No, as in, um, uh, you know, I've just to compare Caymans quickly. I've got a. 2018 2 litre Cayman, just not, a non PDK, S, non standard, S 2 yeah. litre Cayman um, with 20,000 miles on it. I've got an M2 Comp 2019 car with the same miles for less money. Yeah. Yeah. So there, I, I, I sort of side because, as I say, it's very predictable on this podcast because we've discovered that our entire audience either owns M2 Comps or GT4s. Yeah. But I, I get it. I totally understand why people own those cars. Yeah. Because it's actually the ultimate when when friends of mine ask me oh what should I I want to get a sport I was just getting him too you just can't really go wrong they they just sort of do everything as well and and they you know they they're reliable um they're good value which is again this is why I put it in you get a 2 year old M2 comp for early 40s and actually mate before this stupid price rise. Crazy market. They were um, five grand cheaper. I mean, they were an absolute yeah. still. They were late 30s. So, um, but no, they're 57, 58 yeah. Yeah. grand. So, they're still unbelievable value now. So, um, yeah. Fair show. I had to go in. 
So going back to practicality and usability, have you seen the last gen RS4 in uh, some situations has dipped? Uh, yeah. <gasps> what? Now you had one of those. I, I, I've had a few of them and, and I've got an RS4 five in stock now so very similar i've got a three-year-old rs5 in stock but this this is uh this was nearly on my list this car as so well. yeah this is an example i've brought up a 2018 car in the the green that was so desirable when, yeah. when it launched and because hashtag audi all the kit i mean you know and then rs4 you're getting all the bits you could want lovely interior yeah Great performance, great practicality. This one is loaded to the, I'm going to say, to the tit. There yeah. we go. It's got the panoramic roof. It's got the nice hexagonally stitched seats. It's got the sort of sat navs and the reversing cameras. And I mean, what a car. Yeah. And the only reason why that didn't go in my list, because Audi RS cars in general tend to not be good value. As so what, what that, I mean you think that, that will lose a ton of cash? No, no, no. They just hold their money, essentially. Ah. So that car would have been 70 grand list, probably. How many miles has it got? It's quite big, 40, 49,000 miles. How much is it? 50 grand. 50 grand, yeah. So when you think it's done 50,000 miles, it's f- nearly coming up four years old, three and a half years old. It was only 70 grand new. Yeah, fair. You know, and it's still 50 grand now. So that was the only reason why that car didn't go in my list because it didn't, it doesn't, but they're all the same. The, will, the it hold? Car. will it hold? Like if I went and bought that today in, in two years time, will I be in an all right position? Uh, yeah, I mean, they normally, they normally do hold. Look at, even look at the older shape RS6 is that, and that nearly went in as well. But for me, they have their problems now, that older RS6 in terms of, um, to find a good one as well, you have got to spend 50 an grand still. Unmolested one. An unmolested mm. one. They're a little bit like the Audi of the Nissan GTR, essentially. <laughs> yeah, you know, the being, RS6 is a Nissan GTR. You're right, they're just yeah, heavily fettled with. Heavily fettled with, and, and you know, they've got a lot of old tech, but they just have their problem. You know, they've got huge suspension problems, and when they go wrong, it's not funny. Um, and actually... When you start tuning them as well, you'll you'll do an engine or a gearbox, no problem. So, okay, so yeah, it, uh, to me, attractive proposition. But you're right; you're probably paying a lot for. I mean, I still think it's a great car. But that's <laughs> so what I'm they gonna, are. I'm it's an all-round car. That down. Yeah, what a thing! Unbelievable. Yeah, X3 replacement. <laughs> yeah, but, but I just it's just all Audi RS cars in general. They really. I, I never think they're good value because they just always hold their money. Yeah, no fair. A bit like a Porsche, like it's the be- it's the best car, but they would you pay a hundred grand for a nine nine one point one GTS or a, yeah, which yeah, is what we they found, are. We found that was yeah, 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 yeah. That's what they are. But they, I mean, as good as they are, they're not, not good value. Grand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, okay, final car on your list, please, sir. I do need to show Yeah, quite a goosey gander. I think because I, I I got four of them right. Yeah, <laughs> if you haven't got one, well, that's all right, but. Oh, one you'll like. And it's not the best in class. F type. It's good. F, yes! But wait, wait, wait. success. No. No. The two litre car. Oh. <laughs> As a sports car, mate, yeah. you get a. So if you compare that to the Cayman. Right. You get a nearly new F type for what you'd get a three or four year old Cayman for. It'll have more tech in it. Yeah. It'll have loads more extras. It, it drives just as good at that level. And I'm I'm only going on value, maintenance, you know, the whole the whole Chapang. If you if you're sitting in it, you take the badges off, you could be in a V six. You can't be in an R, but you could be in a V six. So that's why I put the two and actually look at statistically, the two litre is the best selling one. Sells over fifty percent. Fifty percent over fifty percent of F types are the two litre. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna fight you on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, better equipped I would actually doubt because unfortunately with Cayman. F-Type, yeah, go with me here. Unfortunately with F-Type, as much as I love them, actually, since they launched in 2014, Jaguar haven't done a lot in terms of equipment. So, for example, my biggest bugbear when I first got in the facelift is at that top end, you know, the 100 grand mark GT car, you haven't got things like radar guided cruise control and properly good voice activated sound systems and what were the complaints? You know, just a lot of stuff which you do get on a 992 Carrera or an S63 Coupe or whatever it might be. And so at a, a I just, I, yeah, 
Porsches and M2s and things, you can you can get so much kit. And F-Types, you just can't really get that much kit on them. I'll tell you why I disagree. Go on. Because a Porsche, yeah. you pay for the extras. Okay, go on, yes. Go, go, you're, go, you're, go, go, with, go. with a Porsche, you're paying for an extra. The, the F-Type, if you compare that particular two-litre car, and I couldn't go R or a SVR sure. because it was too much money. If you compare a standard Cayman to a standard two-litre F-Type, you get more kit standard on an F-Type, and loading them up doesn't cost as much either, which is why I went for it. Okay, so you do know what you're talking about. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but totally fine. Very good and valid point. So then to flip that, my slight issue, and this is totally personal and only based on my experiences, is for me that two litre F-Type is gutless, but- It is gutless. Yeah, it, it sells by the haunches as we've discussed. So it's a two litre Cayman though. Yeah, you're right, a bog star. But so I very nearly put on my list, yeah, V6S, the old shape, yeah. um, or, or even a V8R because so much car for the yeah. money. And if you, you could even get a late, I think 20, 18 V6S, the Probably. old shape, one of the last yeah, cars, yeah. you know, so you still got Apple CarPlay and, and yep. decent tech. Yep. Um, and the, the thing, a lot of people come up to me, they go, oh, I've only got the V6. I'm like, oh, what a car though. It's lighter on its yeah. feet, it's more nimble. They're not doing it anymore in the UK. So sounds great with an exhaust. Just, yeah, I, but I didn't put it on because I was like, oh, how boring and predictable me to be like, oh, F-type, um, even though I've just ruined one <laughs> that you've selected. So I chose instead manual V8, Vantage. Oh my God. Yes, because no matter what Tony's going to say, that car, firstly, if you rolled up anywhere in a 2010, yes, it will have to be a 2010 car, so 12 years old, basically. Well, per- first, firstly, you are rolling. Yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're, not, you're not driving anywhere. But based on what Aston Martin did, someone could think that that was a 2020 car. Like, yo, when did they stop making the last shape Vantage? 19. So, like, there's no diff- There's no way of really telling. Mm-hmm. So your mate's going to be like, oh my God, it's James Bond. Yeah. Now, talking of gutless, yes, okay, early manual V8 advantages, you're not, not really getting up a hill. No. But it makes a great sound. <laughs> yeah. It looks fantastic. When you sit in it, so special. Mm. Now, challenge the road. Um, I did some stuff with them in the tw- Subaru okay. 22B, Richard. Anyway, so Richard and challenge the road are doing Vantage upgrade packages, rest on what I, I need to actually go and either get him back on the podcast or go and film with him so he can explain this properly. I hope I'm not pulling the covers off something that's <laughs> breaking an exclusive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he is proving what great fundamental packages those cars are, what can be done with those cars. Yeah. So I think at 35, 40 grand, it's still a very cool and desirable thing. And I know you're going to come at me with our oh, running costs and it will break and you're going to spend another 30 grand to keep it on the road. But on the off chance that you're not, what a thing to have in your driveway. Well, they have held their money, and that's that's the only nice thing. And they do look nice, and they do sound nice. But apart from that, they're awful. <laughs> and as well, I will say that from a distance, they look lovely. But actually, if you get close up to one, they don't line up. Ever. <laughs> ever. I don't think I've Wonky ever seen a, an Aston Martin that that not the new one the new ones are very good yeah. in terms of build quality or they're better I've not s- ever seen one that completely lines up and the panel gaps are the same and everyone's going to shout at me and say they're hand built well get pe- be- get pe- people p- get better people to, be- <laughs> to build them yeah. yeah I saw that coming so uh, that money would you have a V8 advantage? anything else apart from that oh so you'd have an Alpha 4C would you no <laughs> None of them. <laughs> no, but my, okay, so my point with the Aston... You don't think of some shit. You don't. <laughs> I said, don't give me 50 grand and let me go loose on Auto Trader. Oh it will be a disaster. <laughs> but my point being the Aston punches so above its weight in terms of perspective, like, like, you know, what people will think of yeah. you driving up. You know, people don't really know about cars. The 4C did it the same way. There's very few cars that that kind of money... 40 odd, 35, 40 odd grand that people could think is a brand new sports or super and then go, wow. Yeah. R- R8, R8's another one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. V8, R8 could be another one. But yeah. you know, but again, I feel like the R8's weirdly dated a bit more because there's been so many future vari- yeah. variants. Whilst yeah. the Vantage has stayed true to itself for such a long time. Yeah. You don't know, so. Well, you could you could put a Maserati in there as well. Could. I saw an MC Stradale the mm. other day with the carbon 
bonnet and yeah. I was giving the guy a big thumbs up. Yeah. What a thing. Yeah, and people, you know, they sound beautiful and people really sit up and take notice yeah. when you when you hear or see one of them go past. You're right. So look, we want to know what your thoughts are. Uh, put it below. Let's go a bit more with Tony's original thinking. Don't be like me and pick all the weird, crazy cars. I knew you'd do Car- that. <laughs> cars that represent great value. So sub 50K that you think, wow, why are people not like lapping those up? Why have I not gone and bought one? What a great car for under 50K. And it could be a 20 grand hot hatch. It doesn't have to be 50 grand. But yeah, comment below the cars that you think we, we've missed or we haven't included. And uh, they but- don't have to be best in class either. Yeah. There just needs to be a, 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 a good reason because like I said look, quite a lot of the cars that I picked there wasn't the best in class but I, I think as an all round package they 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 represented the best value yes and whichever car whichever suggestion gets the most thumbs up Tony will go and buy and, and run his personal not car not on car Aston Martin <laughs> please oh by the way how's the Roma hunt going how's the search for the Roma very going? good yeah 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 yeah, yeah found yeah. a car yet no not yet Keep on looking, son. Uh, Anyway, that brings an end to this week's episode. Uh, Definitely slightly more amicable than last week. Thank you for not trying to wind me up now that we're back in the studio. I think next time we go on a road trip, we need space apart from each other, I think. (laughs) Unfortunately, you can put us in the same place for more than four hours. Tony and I just can't help but push each other's (laughs) buttons. And he unfortunately got me really good last week. So anyway, uh, we're back at it. Um, We've got some exciting episodes coming up. When are you doing the YouTube special with me? Are you ready for that yet? Uh, I can, yeah. Yeah. yeah next maybe, couple of weeks, should we maybe, do that? Yeah, maybe, yeah. Ne- maybe next week. All right. We'll do a YouTube yeah. special next week. So a big quiz, big insight into what it's like to be a car YouTuber, how YouTube works, the ins and outs and all the dirty secrets. Uh, and then I think the week after that, as I mentioned, uh, Andrew from Alexander's Prestige is coming down for an SUV special. So get thinking if you've got questions, if you've got bits you want to know or, or why is everyone buying SUVs uh, apparently Andrew's the man to know or he is he's the complete geek and nerd yeah. uh, so it'll be great to have him on so yeah lots of exciting things happening when's he coming in uh, two weeks time oh lovely so, oh yeah. we'll get you that one <laughs> uh, if you want to follow Tony he's at Tony Gravel with car sales on most social media platforms I'm at seen through glass on most social media platforms you can subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're watching it turn on notifications so you don't miss future episodes and if you're listening to us Spotify Apple Podcasts wherever you might be listening to us. Keep listening. We'll be back with you next week for another episode. Bye-bye. Bye.